guys so in today's video i'm going to be talking about culture whether or not we still should be sharing our cultures with people who do not share the same cultures with us whether or not we can still share our culture given the present time we know how it is people are preparing left right center whilst being disrespectful to the culture and the people who have that culture originally and how they are benefiting and profiting from this culture so we're going to be talking about culture appreciation versus culture appropriation we're also going to be talking about gatekeeping so putting all these points in mind let's jump right into the video I understand that the world slowly but surely has become a very difficult place to be in, a very confusing place to be in as well. And it can be quite difficult for you to navigate through what you are supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be standing for, um, what decisions you're supposed to be making, what decisions you are not supposed to be making. And um, altogether, what are you supposed to be doing and how are you supposed to judge situations when you see them? How are you supposed to make a clear, unbiased reasonable rational logical decisions i understand a lot of us are hot and we feel bad and we are now so close-minded we do not want to let anybody share our cultures anymore given history especially given history and given history that is still repeating itself to this day because it's still going on the disrespect the appropriation all that is still going on but i want us to have a conversation with an open mind here like let's leave our biases aside a good number of us have our biases for good reason <laughs> Because we did not just wake up and decided, okay, today is a good day to be biased and not let people share my culture. No, you can't do this anymore. No, you can't do that. No, we did not wake up and decided that we're going to start making these tough decisions, okay? We did not wake up one day and decided that we wanted to start gatekeeping stuff. We had good reasons to make those decisions, understandably so. But for today, I want us to have an unbiased conversation here. I want us to have an open-minded conversation. Let's talk about this really. We're going to start off with understanding the difference between cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. Appreciation is when someone seeks to understand and learn about another culture in an effort to broaden their perspective and connect with others cross-culturally. While appropriation, on the other hand, is simply taking one aspect of a culture that is not your own and using it for your own personal interests and benefits. I added benefits there, so. <laughs> Cooperation could mean purchasing a piece of jewelry or clothing that may have important cultural significance to that culture, but simply using it as a fashion statement. It could be taking a photo of ritual ceremony simply for the sake of getting as many likes on Facebook as possible. Regardless, taking part of another culture without understanding what it truly means can be harmful not only to those whose culture you are using, but also to those with whom you share it. So now that we've differentiated between cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation, let's talk about whether or not culture should be shared whether or not culture can be shared, whether or not we should be sharing and can be sharing our cultures. Originally, when the world was still a good place, was there ever a time where the world was still a good place? Well, let's just say originally when the world was not as shitty as it is today, okay? Sharing cultures used to be a good thing. It used to be something we enjoy doing. It used to be something when we see somebody from a different culture, eating our food, dressing like us, um, trying to speak our language and doing all that cute stuff. Yeah, it's cute stuff, but it's not so much very cute these days. Um, we used to like that. We used to enjoy that. We used to like to see that. But now we're gatekeeping. Understandably so, like I said earlier. We are gatekeeping because of things people have done to us in the past. Because of our cultures, we've been belittled, insulted, ridiculed, dragged through the mud, called all dirty, terrible, nasty names because of these cultures. And now all of a sudden, everybody wants to gain from this culture. We are gatekeeping because of all this. About what gatekeeping is. Gatekeeping is when they lock the gate. Like, <laughs> bros, we have locked the gate, you are not coming in. <laughs> Literally, I mean, that's what it means. So while locking our gates, we're not inviting anybody in anymore. And that is to protect the culture. And I understand that and I understand this concept. But I have a but. In regards to cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation and gatekeeping, I'm beginning to see a lot of anger and resentment these days, especially online in comment sections. You see a lot of anger. I want to ask a question. If you wake up one morning and then you realize that no one wants to share in your culture, no one is interested in your culture. No one wants to eat your food. No one wants to 
try your clothes. No one wants to wear your hair pieces. No one wants to dance the way you dance. Pick something from your music and put it in theirs. Like, would you really genuinely be happy? Would you feel contented? Like, well, if you wake up today and nobody is interested in your culture, would you genuinely be happy about it? Is it, is it something, would, then your culture would be worthless. Because the truth is, culture really is meant to be shared. If there is a culture that nobody is interested in sharing, that culture should not exist. Period. I understand the whole not wanting to share your culture, where that all stems from, the history, the pain and all that. But then seriously, if we really stop sharing our culture, if we really start telling everybody, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, and then really they stop doing it. Do you know what that will make of your culture? Every culture has something that another culture wants to imitate. Whether you understand this or not, we all pick things from other people's culture. Whether you understand this or not. If you look at English, for example, there are words in English that are from all other languages. If you look at my language, for example, there are words in my language you can find in other languages within Nigeria. If you look at food, if you look at clothing, one way or another, we have pieces of each other's cultures in our own culture. Yes, there are people from other cultures who are benefiting, profiting from your culture while being disrespectful. Yes, we can go on about saying how my culture is very important and my culture is not a trend. But at the end of the day, I feel like this topic can be addressed a lot differently from how we are addressing it right now. And then we say because, okay, A, B, C, D is being rude and being disrespectful and appropriating. We are now stopping people that are appreciating from appreciating because, okay, you are from that category of those people that um, are being disrespectful and appropriating. Oh no, even though you're appreciating, we can't accept you. We can't accept you. Because they are genuinely good, respectful people from outside your cultures who want to celebrate your culture with you who wants to appreciate your culture with you but because they come from that group of people you are like no because you are from that group you can't do that anyways and i don't think this is the right way to go yes we should address the matter of um, appropriation and people benefiting and being disrespectful we should address that and find a way to let those people know what they are doing is wrong and they cannot continue to do this. But we cannot say everybody from that group cannot come and celebrate our cultures with us, cannot come and appreciate our cultures with us because they are from that group of people or they belong to that same group of people who are being rude and being disrespectful. And then when it comes to the topic of sharing culture, I've kind of seen a clash going on here where people from one community, one ethnicity, um, don't have like a unanimous um, stand Okay, so I'm Asian, as you can see, but I'm an Asian from Asia, so it's a difference than uh, Asian Americans, you know? Nothing bad about Americans. I'm in America, I love America, but I'm just saying, we're different. And based on that, I just want to say I'm so tired of seeing on TikTok that Asian Americans telling a white person or a black person or anyone in general that's not Asian to stop culture appropriating our culture. I mean, first of all, you're Americans. Like, if you go to China, if you go to Hong Kong, Japan, yeah, you look like us, but you're American. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've ever been to Asia, you know we love when people share our culture. We love, love, love when we see foreigners in Chipa. We love when we see them in kimono. We love that shit. We love it. So I'm just saying, like, before I end this video, if anyone ever need a permission, I'm saying no one should need a permission to do anything because like culture is meant to be shared. But if you ever need one because it's America, I'm Asian, like where are your cheap out? Like I love to see it. Please let me know. Send me a picture, please. Also, there's some more like educated one. They would say, oh, like if you want to do it, do it the right way, the proper way. I mean, I totally understand. Yes, like do it respectfully. And they also say like, oh, don't sexualize our culture, this and that, blah, blah, blah. First of all, I don't know other people, but like in China, we sexualize ourselves. I have two cheap out here. Oh my god, my cat. Hold on. Hi! Okay, I have two cheap out here. I mean, these are not the crazy one. You know, some of them like have a hole here. Some of them are even shorter. But the traditional one is like down to the ankle, right? But mine is really short. Like you might not see it right now. 
and I'm not gonna put it on because it's gonna get bent. But mine is really short. When I put it on, I'm 5'10". When I put it on, it's literally right here. It just covers my little nana, you know, like it's just right there. It's made in China. I bought it in China. And they have all the other things too. It's for fashion. It's fashion. It's not just a traditional dress anymore. And I'm just saying, the problem is America. And I don't know how to fix it. And I don't think it'll ever change. But I'm just saying, if you love Asian culture, just go for it. Culture is meant to be shared. So she got a lot of backlash from the Asian American community um, when she made this video. A lot of Asian Americans were saying that she can't say what she said because the experiences are different, obviously. She was born in China, I think, and she grew up there. So of course it's easier for people um, who live outside America to um, be more open to wanting to share their culture. You don't have the same experiences as Americans, so you, um, you feel differently, of course. And that is true, and I think this is something that we do not put in mind sometimes when we say the things we say yes of course she does not have the same experiences she lived in an entirely different world from the asians who lived in america they have different history they have different stories they live different lives so their stories are different so they want to get keep and protect their culture because of what people have done to them because of their cultures because of what people are doing now with their cultures they want to protect their cultures this will be the first and last time i explain how this is cultural appropriation because i feel like so many Many people have addressed Do you know I get so sick of this argument right your ancestors left Africa they weren't the only ones white people's ancestors left Africa they have history with braids too your history which is quite small in comparison to the world was dark and horrible but you cannot negate the fact that other people have history with braids like you even used uh, one of your other TikToks, you used Native Americans. They left Africa too, way before you. So to say that it's cultural appropriation is not actually true because braids do not belong to just your culture. It belongs to everybody on the planet. We all, not me, I was born in Africa. They left Africa and they took the skill set with them. So this lady said a lot in her video that we're not going to be covering in this video today. So yes, white people have history with braid and I know some people will say braiding of hair is braiding of hair, but <laughs> let's be honest, braiding is not braiding. White people kind of braid is different from African kind of braids. But then I came across this video where this lady was talking about culture and how there is a difference between an immediate culture that belongs to your immediate ethnicity or your immediate group. Then there's culture that's not really found in your immediate culture or your immediate group. I posted a video about my hair and showed what it looks like completely natural and untreated. It sparked a lot of discourse about what's an afro and am I black? And if we all came from Africa, how can white people be culturally appropriative? Cultural appropriation occurs when someone takes a feature from a closed culture to which they do not belong and then divorces it from its roots and then capitalizes off of it socially or financially. Let's be honest, when white people are braiding their hair these days, they're not really doing Vikings braids or um, French braids. They are doing box braids. I don't think box braids is part of white culture so every other point the lady brought up in her video we're not going to be talking about it today because it's just going to make this video way too long so i'm probably going to make um, a video on that at another date in the future i want us to focus on the point of how she being a woman who was born in africa feels um it's okay for anybody to braid their hair so yes white people come from africa and they have history with braid and braiding is part of their culture but they do not have cornrows as part of their immediate culture now do they they do not have box braids as part of their immediate culture now do they as you guys can see there's a little bit of clash going on here where people who come from like the native land versus people who live in america who share similar cultures are having like a clash those who come from the native lands are saying it's okay if you braid your hair if you wear kimono and those in america are saying it's not okay if you braid your hair if you are not black or if you are not um from my culture it's not okay if you wear kimono or you wear anything from my culture if it's, it's not okay i do not want to share my culture with you and so you can see this clash going on here and it's quite interesting in my opinion i want to bring on this clash because somehow i felt it's relevant to this video in my opinion i could be wrong but what i'm seeing here is two people who feel the way they feel 
understandably so they have the right to feel the way they feel but i still feel like i've said before in my previous video even though you feel differently about a topic i feel it's important that we all as individuals find a way take out our time to learn about other people's history because it all makes a big difference when we learn about other people's history. We cannot really literally walk in their shoes, but we can at least read books. We can at least speak to them and understand where they are coming from and why they feel the way they feel and why they make the decisions that they've made and why they act the way they act. That gives us an in-depth understanding. So even though we do not agree we understand and then when we want to approach the topic or talk about it we speak a lot differently because if i come now as a black person that was born in africa in nigeria born and bred here in nigeria come out and start talking about how i don't understand what's wrong with african americans why are you guys always going on and on and on about this you're always going on and on and on about that i'm just going to be stupid and ignorant but even if I feel differently about a topic, but because I have taken out my time to learn, I'm going to approach it a lot differently. I personally take it upon myself to learn. And I feel like this is something that a good number of us are lacking. Some form of education. I was born in Africa. I braid my hair. I see people who maybe come for vacation, they braid their hair when they leave. Culturally, braiding of hair is something we do here. It's part of the culture. We braid our hair. There are different styles. There are even styles that are called Ghanaian braids. There are Senegalese braids. So different places in Africa have different ways they braid their hairs. We all share from the way they braid their hairs and braid our hairs like that. So braiding of hair is like an African cultural thing. But I never grew up getting pissed when I saw a white person or an Asian person braid their hair because the experiences here is different. So I started learning and I learned about African-American history and what braiding of hair meant to African-Americans. So um, the significance to African-Americans, what it meant to them in their history. And I also learned how they were being treated as regards braiding of hair, how you could get teased, how you might not even get a job, um, because of your hair and then all of a sudden now we see as time goes by braiding of hair is becoming a trend Everybody wants to braid their hair in America and now African-Americans are like well Was it not the same braiding of hair that we got called names for was it not the same braiding of hair that we got? Um, looked down on was it not the same braiding of hair that was so bad and ugly and smelling and all that And now everybody wants to braid their hair the same thing too when it comes to um dress There was a lot of thing there I'm, I, I even recently saw a video of a white guy talking about how dreads are smelly how they don't wash them So there's a lot of stereotype when it comes to when it comes to all these things yeah, So yes in Africa there are braids people braid their hair is an African thing people carry their hair in um, in dreads as a hairstyle um, there is all that. So now as an African, knowing this about African-Americans, you see how I'm not going to come online and start talking rubbish. So you see now how, even though I feel differently, given my upbringing, given where I was born, given my experiences, even though it's the same culture as braiding of hair, for example, is the same culture that African-Americans have, I'm not going to start telling African-Americans that I don't see why you are gatekeeping your hair or gatekeeping your culture. Because now I have learned and I've educated myself. I took time to learn. I'm still learning. I'm going to understand where they are coming from and I'm going to have another approach. And I'm not going to now start attacking them. So I feel like when you want to come out and you want to talk about these things, you should first take the time to educate yourself. I'm not saying Asians who are born in Asia cannot say, um, yes, you can share my culture with me. I'm not saying Africans who are born in Africa cannot say, yes, I don't see anything wrong with you braiding your hair. But what I'm saying is you coming out in, in a manner that comes from a place of maybe you've not taken out the time to learn. I said maybe because I'm not sure. I'm not saying these people have not taken out the time to learn. Um, you can come out and say it differently like way differently than you are than you than than an attack if you understand what i mean yes we have people who are on the internet intentionally doing things to anger people we have those people that i think we have them more than we are supposed to have them we have a good number of these people that are doing things intentionally to to um to anger people um they intentionally do the eye sign things to just asians or they braid their hair and 
just do it in such a way it's obvious they are looking for your trouble i'm not talking about those people now yes we have them like i said we have them more than we should but i'm talking about people who genuinely appreciate your culture with you um who wants to appreciate your culture with you who wants to share in your culture who loves your culture who wants to be associated with it in a good way um who are not using your culture to gain money or clouts or popularity or all that terrible stuff yeah i'm talking about people now who genuinely love what you have going in your culture and they want to vibe to it are we saying even those people no matter what they are white pink polka dots asian latina mexican hispanics what do we have again no matter what they are are we saying that they cannot and i think on this note i want to end this video so thank you very much for watching let me know down below in the comments what you think just um just about the whole video let me know what you think and i'll see you down below bye and also like subscribe all that good stuff bye